Hello, and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. For all our first-time visitors, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to grab your Bibles and your journals. That way you can take some good notes. And remember to remain faithful to your offering, your tithes, and your giving. Our Zelle number is on the screen. Thank you again, and enjoy the service. Hi, welcome back to this evening's Bible study. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys the Word of God again. Um, before we do, let's uh, let's pray. Father God, we come before your presence. I thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that we have you in our life and that no matter what takes place around us, pandemic is going on, that, Lord, you give us your peace. And we have that, that confidence in you. And I just pray tonight, Lord, as we're here, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts through your word, minister to us, Father. I pray for an understanding heart, Father. And then, Lord, also to apply your word in our life, that we may, that we may be strong Christians. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Have your way, Lord. Amen. Tonight, I wanted to uh, talk about um, how to develop your relationship with God, part two. So we're getting off of last week. Um, if you were able to listen to it, awesome. If you haven't, you can always go back and listen to it later. Um, a small recap, we're talking about, you know, that it's very important to have a relationship with God. Um, God is uh, is everything uh, to me, and I'm sure he is everything to you. And it's important to have a strong relationship with, with our king. Um, and like I said, once again, a recap, you know, going over, you know, of, of, of uh, how the importance of it, um, our walk with him, you know, talking about um, how do I get to know God? You know, last week we talked about uh, Enoch, you know, um, uh, do what Enoch did. You know, we, we, if you read the scripture um, and, we, and we look at Enoch's life in Genesis chapter 5, it talks about Enoch where he walked with God. It's, he, he, he was always, whenever you read, about, you read about the scripture, it talks about how he was always um, speaking to God, always um, in communication with God, always uh, in, in close intimacy with God. And, and that's what we need to be. Like Enoch, we, we, we're learning every day to walk with God. Um, also, you know, we have also talked last week about putting God first. We need, it's important to put God first in everything, in, in, our, in, in every um, area of our life. Making sure that our priority is first God and the things of God, and then our family, and then everything else falls under that. Because if, if, if you take the time, if you put God first, God will bless you. God will put his covering upon you, upon your, your marriage, your children, your home, your finances, um, your job, whatever it may be. But God will bless you if you put him first. Uh, you know, we looked at the story about uh, Mary and Martha in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, you know, where uh, Jesus came and he came to their house. And we looked at the two sisters, uh, Mary Mary's priority was God, the things of God, and she gave God her her everything, her her full attention. And we look at Martha, the other sister. She was too busy for the things of God, too busy to sit down and have a relationship with the King, with the Redeemer, with her Savior, because she had things to do. And oftentimes, that we we must be aware be aware of that because we can become too busy, too busy in our walk that we push God to the side. And that's, that's, uh, that's a very scary thing. Um, but once again, we, but we need to put God first. Also, uh, you know, um, going forward now, you know, like I said, as, as we go look in the part two of our how to develop our ship with, with, with God, um, you know, we must seek God with our whole heart. It's very important that we strive to, 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 to search for God, to look for God, to read about God, to pray to God, to, to seek Him with all our heart, mind, and soul. It's very, very important. If you follow along with me tonight, if you have your Bibles, pull them out. Awesome, great. If you have them on, on, your, on, your, on your phone, you can use the Bible app. Um, but I want to encourage you, follow along with me, read the scriptures, and let God speak to you. Um, Book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. I brought my Bible today. My wife said, 
Take your Bible so that way you can you can reference that instead of looking at your iPad. So I brought my Bible and it's, it's an older Bible uh, for those that know me. It's, it's kind of beat up, but I use this all the time. I love it. Um, um, I'm sure you have an old Bible at home that you, that you love to use, but praise God. Um, follow along with me. Look, Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 says, I know all things you do that you were neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. Verse 16. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You know, what does God, um, what does God think about believers who are lukewarm or half-hearted toward him? You know, he, Bible says he will spit them out, vomit them out. God doesn't desire um, us to, to follow him half-heartedly. He, does, he doesn't want us to be here in his, in, in his house and thinking about other things. You know, um, he wants our full attention. Why? Because he loves us. Because he cares about us. And when you care about somebody, you want their full attention. My spouse, you know, there are times where we're in the kitchen and we're cooking or we're talking. And or she's talking to me and my mind could be on something else. And she stops and say, hey, pay attention, you know, or listen to me. I'm trying to tell you something. I need your full attention because I want you to hear what I have to say. And that's all God is. God wants our full attention because he wants us to hear what he has to, to say, what he has to speak, what he has to share and impart into our life, that we can become stronger with him, have a deeper relationship with him. Psalms 119 verse 2. Book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 2. I just want to say I really miss you guys. It's not the same. I, I would rather be in the same room with you guys, sharing with you, uh, laughing with you guys, um, but pretty soon, it, pretty soon it will happen. We'll be here again, all together. Psalms 119, verse two. It says, joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. You know, how are we to seek God? It says in, in 119, verse two, to seek him with all our heart. The Bible says to search for him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our being. You search for God. You look for God. You seek God and you're going to find him. You will find him. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. When we really get to know God, or when, when, when we really get to know God or find him, is when we search for him with all of our heart. When we give everything up, everything, ourselves, our personal gains, our personal desires, and we put it to the side, and we put God first, and we seek him, and we search for him. The Bible says, what does it say? It says, we will find him. We will find him when we search for him with everything, with our whole being. Matthew chapter five, verse six. Matthew chapter five, verse six. It says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. We will be filled with God when we do what? When we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, to be righteous, you know, to, to stand before God, to seek, to seek his holiness, to seek his presence, to seek God. What are the results of seeking God? What are the results of seeking God? Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. That's for you, Jill, because you're always asking me all the time when we have Bible study, can you repeat that? So that's for you, Jill. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. I miss you. It says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and, and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Wow, that's, that's heavy. You know, what are the results of seeking God? You know, um, who, who is to seek God? God's people. 
We are God's people. We belong to God. We, are, we have been brought into the, the sheepfold by, by the shepherd. We are, are his people, his congregation. And, and God wants us to seek him. You know, what are four things we are to do? What are the four things we are to do? The scripture talks about, it says, one, we are to humble ourselves. Humble. And that's a hard word for a lot of people to do, to become humble, to make yourself humble. Second thing is we are to pray, to really, truly pray with, with, with our heart, from our heart. Three, see God's face. God, God desires us to seek his presence. You know, don't be content with just saying a 15-minute prayer or you, you did your 20 minutes today, you're good. No, see, uh, make, make it, make, make it your, your, your purpose, your life's goal to always seek his presence. Because if you find God's presence, man, God will touch you. God will minister to you. God will speak to you. God will, God's word will encourage you. You may, you may be going through a horrible, you may be having a horrible day, going through a, a stressful situation, but you take a moment to, to seek his presence, to, to pray, to cry out to God, to lay everything at his feet, and you reach his presence. God will touch you. God will, will supernaturally intervene in a situation. And also, number four, turn from our evil ways. You know, we must, we must always have a penitent, humble heart, a repentant heart, allowing God's Holy Spirit that lives within us. Remember we talked about the Holy Spirit last week? How He lives within us. God, the Holy Spirit convicts us and, and how we, we need to act upon that. Not just listen to it and then disregard what the Holy Spirit has to say, but to respond to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to speak to us, minister to us, and to change our, our lifestyle, our lifestyle, our actions, so that we can turn away from, like the Bible says, our evil ways. So we can become um, the people that truly seek God, the, the, the people that God wants him, uh, wants him to follow. What does God promise to do? As we read, going back to our scripture, what does God promise to do? He promised four things in our scripture. Let's, let's read it one more time so that we just keep it fresh in our memory. He says, uh, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Bible says, I will hear from heaven. God will hear from heaven. God will hear your cry, hear your prayer. He will, he will hear that need and he will respond. He also says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins. Man, we blow it all the time, right? We, we, we always have a tendency to, to, to make mistakes, to put our foot in our mouth. I do it all the time. I'm always asking God, please God, help me. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Many times I have to, you know, I have to, I have to say, I have to apologize to my wife because oftentimes I put my foot in my mouth. Um, and, uh, and and as a husband, you know, as as when you have a spouse, you know, it's it's being you have to be willing to say you're sorry. It's very important if you want your relationship, if you want your marriage to last, because we have to humble ourselves and admit I made a mistake. And but you're asking forgiveness, and that's what God does. You know, when we when we ask forgiveness, God does forgive us and he forgets and also what does it say and god will um heal our land how, how many of you guys want healing you know and not only just healing in your body but also healing in your home healing and maybe in your marriage healing with your relationship with your children healing relationship with, with your parents your cousins your family your friends you know god can bring healing in your life and in, in, in every aspect that's the promises that that, that god uh will do he will heal us praise god for that right second chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 as we delve a little bit deeper second chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 it says the eyes of the lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him what a fool you have been from now on you will be at war the Bible says the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to st strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What type of person are the eyes of the Lord searching for? Searching for those whose hearts are completely his. Looking for those people uh, like you and I that, that, that are striving to serve God. You know, walking with God um, is not an easy thing. Um, but it's not impossible because we serve a, a mighty God who will give us the strength every day to make the right choices, to do to do the right thing, 
um, and to be a witness to others. But the Bible, in the scripture Bible, is, is the Lord is, is seeking those whose hearts are completely his, those who truly desire God and the things of God. I, I, I pray that you that, that for those that are listening, for myself, that man, do we will always strive to be the people um, whose heart are completely God's. What does God want to do for that person? Look at our scripture. It says, it says, um, strengthen, he will show himself strong. The Bible says in the New King James Version, he will show himself strong. God is our, uh, is our protector. God is, is, is the one that keeps us in times of, of tribulation, in times of, of panic, like we're going through right now across the nation. God is our strong tower. He will always be our refuge of safety. Always be your refuge of safety whenever and wherever you need him. Psalm 34, verse 10. Psalms 34, verse 10. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Those who seek the Lord will not lack what? What does it say? Any good thing. God has so much in store for you and I, so much blessing, so much prosperity. God has, has a, a future, a plan for your life, for your family, for your home, you know, um, and God will always give you that good thing. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. You will never lack a good thing when you have God in your life, when you seek him. Proverbs 8, verse 17. I love all who love me. Those who search will surely find me. When we seek God, what happens? We will find him. We will find him. If you love, I love all who love me and those who search will surely find me. You know, I pray, I pray tonight that you will search and look for God, that you would, you will always be open to God, to his spirit, and that you will search for him, truly search for, for God for that healing, for that answered prayer. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged if you pray and believe God for, for, for something and you don't see it happen right away. Keep believing, keep hoping, keep trusting, keep praying because God will come through. You will find that answer you're looking for. You can't find it in, in this world today you, and you can't buy it with money, but you could find it in God. You could find the answer that you're looking for. Examples of those who sought God. I, I just have a few examples. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. It says... And Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you, but if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Solomon was instructed to know God and to serve God. How was he, how was he supposed to do this? To, um, I was supposed to, to worship and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. You know, that's how we find God. That's how we, we get to know God, as we worship him and we serve him with your whole heart. 
with your every fiber, with, with every part of your being and a, and a willing mind to, to get to know God intimate, intimately. You know, that's how you get to get become closer with him is when you open yourself up to him. You know, you, you, you can never you can never have a, a true relationship relationship with someone unless you're, you're willing to put your guard down. You know, um, relationships, you know, people go in relationships and, and they have they have their guard up. They have a wall up because they don't want to be hurt because they don't want anyone to get close to them and then break their heart. You know, maybe you've experienced that. Um, and and it's and many people are afraid to let people in and into their life. But don't you don't ever have to be that way with God, because when you let when you let go and you. Let, let let those walls down when you when you open up your heart to God you open yourself to him to his spirit God will will, will speak to you God like my book says revelation for three verse 12 you know he will come in to, into you into your heart and dine with you and you with him he he, he he will become your all you will get to you will get to know him and you will get to know him in, in a personal way um and, and not just, you know, God that you hear in, in church. Oh, okay, you, you know, you guys go to church, you serve God. Okay, you always hear about, okay, you want to find God, go to church. You know, but it's, it's more than that. It's having, as a Christian, as a believer, understanding that serving God is, it's a, is, is a daily walk with Him. And as you open yourself to Him, as you allow God to strip away, you know, like an orange, the, the, the outer part of an orange, to taking off the, the crust, um, until you find the, the tender, juicy fruit on the inside. God, as, 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 as He takes the, the, the walls that we, that we set up, the, those bannies that we put over our heart, as God removes them, as, as God ministers into our life, as we allow Him to, he will, he will find your heart. He will touch your life. He will bring healing. And, and, and you will find that intimacy that, that, that you've never experienced before in your whole life with God, your Creator. And that's what, and, and that's what Solomon was being instructed by by his father to, to get to know God intimately, become close with, with with the King. Second Chronicles chapter thirty one verse twenty. You know, I, I really pray that this is ministering to your heart. Um, you know. There's, there's times when, you know, when as a Bible study teacher, you study and you just feel God's spirit speak to you. And you could be reading God's word and you're preparing for the Bible study like, like as, as tonight. And you just you just you just feel God speaking to your heart. And you, and you just you just know that God is just ha has something to say to his people. And this is how I feel about this tonight. That God has something to say to you. God wants you to um, he wants a closer walk with you. But but only you can allow him in you have you have the door open, but only you can open it up to him because he will never force himself upon anyone he wants you to gladly open up to him so that way he can he can come in and dine with you second second chronicles chapter 31 verse 20 It says, in this way, King Hezekiah handled the distribution throughout all Judea, doing what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. In all that he did in the service of the temple of God and in his efforts to follow God's laws and commands, Hezekiah sought his, whole, his God wholeheartedly, and as a result, he was very successful. How did, how did, how did Hezekiah seek his God? He sought him wholeheartedly. There you go, hear it again. Seeking God with your whole heart, going all the way. Not, not one fit in church and one fit out in the world, not, not, not contemplating, okay, I'm gonna go to church only on Sundays. No, come every service. Make it a point to read God's word every day, praying to God every chance you can get. Why just pray once in the morning? Pray throughout your day. You could be in your car, you could be at your job. Pray to him, speak to him. Allow God's Holy Spirit to minister to you. Open yourself up to God, seeking God, and you will find him. Hezekiah, the Bible says, he sought God with his whole heart. And what was the result? He was very successful. How many, how many guys want to be successful? I don't know what you, but I want to be successful. You know, in my marriage, um, raising my children, 
uh, in, in the ministries that the God ha has allowed me to, to, to be in. I want to be successful in my job, whatever I do with my hands, wherever I go, I want to be successful. And I know I'm pretty sure you guys want to be successful too. And when we serve for God, when we serve God wholeheartedly, when we seek him wholeheartedly, we will be successful because we have a relationship with God. As we're talking about developing a relationship with him, these men, these examples, these men put God first. They sought God with their whole heart. And the Bible says they were successful. God will make you successful. God will give you a blessing and prosperity. But it comes when you seek him with your whole heart. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. Another person we, go, another person we can look at. Ezra 7 verse 10. Ezra 7, verse 10, Joe. Okay. Find it. I finally found it. <laughs> okay. Uh, 7, verse 10. It says, This was because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. It says, Ezra prepared his heart so he can do what three things? One, to seek the law of the Lord. He prepared his heart to seek God, to seek his word. Number two, to do it, to carry it out. You know, oftentimes we hear the word of God, but are we applying it to our life? That's, the, that's, some, that's one area that we, we must take a, a, a closer look at. We, we, we must always make sure that when we hear God's word, when we read God's word, we must apply it. And also, number three, to teach God's statutes, which is a written law, and, and ordinances to Israel, um, the, the practices, the, um, the rituals, you know, the, the, the ordinances, the things that were passed down from generation to generation to, to serve God, you know, um, the, the ancient, uh, ancient landmarks that were set. He desired to, to seek and serve God with his whole being. And so he prepared his heart to do these three things because he wanted to see not only his life, but he wanted to see the lives of his, of his fellow brothers and sisters, his fellow countrymen blessed, to see them prospered, to see um, the city of Jerusalem rebuilt because once, because what they once had was gone. And, and, and that's a scary thing because we can, be, we, can have some, we can have the blessings of God in our life. We can be blessed. We can have God's covering. But man, if we're not praying, if we're not reading, if we're not seeking God wholeheartedly, if we're not putting him first in our priorities, if, 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 if we're not teaching God's word um, to our children, if we're not applying God's word to our life, we can lose that. The, the, people, the people of God, the Israelites, they lost that that their city they, they lost their nation they lost um who, who they were for, for 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 seven years for a time because they didn't value the things of god they didn't value serving god they took their eyes off of god i want to encourage you tonight do not take your eyes off of god even at this moment even when when, when things food may be scarce you know people losing jobs not knowing how long this quarantine is going to last don't 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 become afraid. Don't let that wear you down or be distracted. Focus on God and the things of God, and let God bring healing, like 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 He was doing in Ezra's time, in Ezra's life, and in the lives of Israelites, bringing healing to His people. Because Ezra was a man who who sought God, a man who wanted to see a um, a revelation and a uh, a move of God's Spirit in in his community. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, as we're getting ready to close right now. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. It says, Today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life. This is God telling his people. Oh, that you would choose life. 
Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose lives that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, our, our, Christian, our Christian life is a result of choices that we make. God will never force himself or his will upon us. He has given us a free will to choose life or death, blessings or curses. Do you choose to seek God first? What do you want? Blessings or curses? Life or death? Getting to know God by seeking him daily is a lifelong commitment. Just as marriage is a commitment in which two people choose to spend the rest of their lives getting to know one another, so too is our relationship with God. Getting to know someone, it takes time. It also takes effort, patience, talking, and listening. It takes seeking out the company of one another. It takes your whole heart to really get to know someone well. God wants us to walk with him just as we would walk with our spouse or our best friend. We know that as Christians, we should always desire to get closer to God. Just like we desire to get close to our spouse, how much more God and the things of God. So I wanna encourage you tonight as, as we went through the scriptures and we, we looked at several examples in, in the Bible that talk about uh, men who put God first, who sought God with their whole heart, and then you see the blessings of God upon their life. You've seen them uh, so successful. God desires that for you and I, but it comes when we seek him with our whole heart. And that, it, like I said, once again, it is important that we have a, a, a closer relationship with God. And even in times that we're going through, how much more can we get closer to him? So I pray that this, this the word of God encourages you. Um, come back next week as we delve a little bit deeper into uh, the Bible study, into God's word again. Um, just know that God has uh, great things for you and um, God wants to speak into your life. So let's close in prayer. Father God, we come before your presence. I pray, Lord, that you, the Lord, would always give us uh, the revelation, Lord, to, 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 to see, to know that you desire a deeper walk with us, that you have something greater for our lives. And I pray, Lord, that as we read your word, as we seek your face, as we put you first, and we seek you with all our heart, mind, and soul, that you would reveal yourself to your people in a, in a, in a deeper, more intimate way, Lord. That when this when this quarantine is over, Father, that your people would, would have a, 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 a deeper commitment to you, Lord, ready to go out in the harvest field and share your word with those that are around them. As we use this time, as this time is being used by you, Lord, to strengthen your core, to strengthen your people, Father, so that way, Lord, we can share your word to others. I pray, God, that you would just keep everyone safe. Thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, you guys have a good night, and I will see you next week. God bless.